Welcome back guys. So right now we're going to be starting with testing our whole REST API based app. So before we get started on testing, we need to first install a few dependencies. So what are the dependencies that we need to install? We need to install our main testing library, Node's testing library, which is Mocha. So npm install npm install minus minus uh, sorry mocha minus minus save minus dev so let's get it installed uh, it will take some time I guess so we are done with installing mocha so now let's install our assertion library which is should JS so minus minus save minus dev so let's also wait a little bit for getting this installed. All right, we're done. So after both of these are installed, what we have to do is in our package.json, as you can see, both of these are installed. It doesn't matter which version you have, just download the default version. And for, our, for, for starting our test, what we want is a command. So Mocha is our test runner. So Mocha will run our tests like so. So we want our tests to be inside the folders that we are creating our uh, index.js. For example, for posts, we want our tests for post related endpoints, all the functionalities of a post object, of a post controller inside the post folder so that we know that all the functionalities regarding post and its test uh, and also its test endpoints are in the same directory for the whole module. So for example, we have a test directory and we create a JS file. So runner.js. All right, so we have a test directory inside post and we have a runner.js file. So what we want is we want Mocha to recursively run all the files that have this pattern. So in any folder, just find out a test directory and a runner.js file and run all the tests inside that directory's runner.js file. So that's what Mocha is going to do. You create a test directory inside models, even then it will run a test for and create a uh, like test inside the runner.js file. So now we want to write our main test functionalities, our test codes. But before that, I've, I want to review something. So in our, for, our, for running our tests, you need to remember that you can't pollute your main database. You have to have a separate database for testing your endpoints. Like if your endpoints work as, you, as it's supposed to, if the response that you're getting from your endpoints are, are ex as, expected as, as expected. So you create some dummy data, you create some dummy uh, post objects, and then you expect that it should have this this much length and it should have this this title and the title should equal to this. You assert this kind of, you expect this kind of response from your endpoints. So you basically assert that the response from your endpoints are this and that. So I guess you'll understand it once I start coding it. So first of all, I want to specify that this is this is a test environment. So you are in a test environment and so in a test environment you need to connect to a separate database but before that let's first require the files that i'm sorry i'm just writing es6 uh syntax we'll get to es6 syntax at the end of our testing session All right so we have again we want to create a base url so process.env.pwd and we want to require our config file. So config equals require base, add the base, and then just slash config, right? And then we want to also require mongoose because we have to create our database, uh, test databases, uh, some some instance of our post object for of our, of our yeah we want to create some instance of our post object and test against it so that our endpoints work as it's supposed to. So we require the mongoose 
module. Then we want to require our controller, post controller. So because we want to check if the functionalities are working as it's supposed to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do unit testing, not integration testing. Integration testing is basically just testing if the routes are working properly. Like as in if the routes are sending, giving you a request and a response. But that's, but that's basically what we're doing with Postman itself. What we are checking with Postman, like how, how, how our endpoints are supposed to behave and what, what kind of uh, response we're getting. It's basically integration testing. So I find it quite useless. So that's why I prefer either mocking your endpoints, like mocking or stubbing your endpoints, or you can just create a test database and then check if the data that you're querying is what's, uh, what you're supposed to get. All right, so controllers slash controllers slash controller slash post. And so we have a post controller and then we want our post model as well. Require base plus slash model slash post. And then we want should library, should module for asserting our, uh, if our endpoints are behaving as it should. <laughs> if, we, if the response that we're getting from our endpoints are what's expected or not. And then we have, all right, so basically these are the basic stuff, but uh, later on we'll write a function that, that will help us to assert what we're getting. So let's get started with it. Before we get on to writing our test codes, we want to write a helper function for our test. So a helper function would help us to uh, basically assert, make the assertions via a callbacks. Like for example, you have a rest.json sending you all the callbacks, but then you want to basically catch that response.json and then make validations upon it, like assert, assert everything upon it. So what we want to do is create a folder that will have our test helper functions. So, sorry, not a file. I want to create a folder test and inside the text test folder, I have a utility file. So utils.js and inside I want to write a function that will help me to make assertions properly. So var response validator equal function and then you have status code passed in expected status code and the validation function as our callback i'll explain it as after i finish writing it so it will return a callback uh, callback object of a json if it's a json response that we're getting then we have we're gonna handle it via status like status code will be passed in and the data so we can make assertions of the data that's being passed via the json rest.json call so you wanna you wanna assert that the status code and the expected status code should be should be equal to each other because or else then like for example we're sending the status code when it's a success the status code is 200 so you want to assert that 200 status code is as expected. So expected status code. And you want to basically send the, the data so that we could later on make assertions on the data. Because rest.json is just sending you something, but it's not like if you have a callback function for sending in the data for, so that later on you can assert on the data, then it's quite helpful. So for a JSON, we have this. We could also have one for the scenario when we are just doing rest.send. For example, in the case of error, we're doing just a send call. Rest.send 500 and we're sending the error. So status code and the data, which could be the error in, in our case. So the status code again should equal, should equal the expected status code and send me the error, send me the error object. All right, now let's, let's module.export it, dot exports response 
validator. All right, so now we can successfully use this response validator in our runner function. Now in the next tutorial, I'm actually going to start writing, finally going to start writing the test the test code for our endpoints. We'll start with the create endpoint. And first of all, we have to connect to our test database. That's why we configure, uh, we included the config file over here and mongoose for initiating the connection like mongoose.connect. And yeah, so we'll see all that in our next video. So stay tuned.